it's important for the consumer to be aware of what they're buying, why you're buying it, what's, what it's going to do for your skin, and what you're looking for. <laughs> I'm so, so grateful, truly, that there's 1K subscribers. Thank you so much, guys. I really, really appreciate that. You have no idea how much you guys mean to me. You have no idea how excited I get. I really just want to focus on bringing value to you guys, and that's why I created the new Instagram account. I really just want all my content bringing value to my beautiful, amazing subscribers and followers. And um, I love learning about you guys. Please message me. Let me know how you are and that kind of thing. So without further ado, let's get into today's topic, which is on retinol. So um, a few weeks ago, I posted a video on how I cure my acne. And then I did a video on Dr. Dennis Gross, like a product review. And I just wanted to do a series, just a skincare series, but not necessarily promoting products, more just talking about important ingredients that I have learned about and what they do for your skin. The reason I wanted to do this was because as a consumer and like as not a, not a medical student, but as a consumer, there's so much deception in the market. I feel like you go to spas, salons, like from, this, from a young age, I used to do that with my mom. And the therapist would try and sell you these products and you would think that if you had acne, you have to buy the whole Dermalogica range, for example, just for example. Dermalogica is a great brand, I'm not putting it down, I'm just saying you don't understand why you're using what you're using and like it's almost like, oh, it's not working because you didn't get the entire, you didn't spend like 10,000 rand on the entire range, which is not the truth at all. And it, it's not necessarily that one brand, no matter what brand it is, is better than another brand. It's more like what ingredients are they using, what concentration of the ingredients you're using and what ingredients do you need for your skin type and um, that's why I thought I'd begin with the ingredient the magical ingredient retinol um, this is something that I think that everyone and their mom should be using like girl boy like everybody basically because um, it's really really helpful it is prescribed by dermatologists I'm talking so much from my hands um, it's prescribed by dermatologists to treat um, hyperpigmentation wrinkles acne it's uh, really helpful for anti-aging and just saying that I, I want I want you all to bear in mind this isn't a video like only geared for you if you're 40 plus like retinol is an ingredient I use and I'm 22 years old um, I do I strongly believe that prevention is better than cure I think that before you develop really bad signs of like premature aging it's important to be in a good skincare regimen to prevent that from actually happening because then it's the products are just more effective right than spending like or investing like thousands and thousands of rands when you're older to try and eradicate the damage that was done when you were young. So because I've made that statement, um, the most, the cheapest like thing that every single person should be using, I don't care what you are, like don't use anything, don't use anything if you're not using a sunblock because you're just wasting your time. I think sunblock is something that every single person, no matter what age you are, whether you're two, three, four, most of the skincare damage like from hyperpigmentation stuff is done when you're young like during your teenage years and during your 20s that kind of damage only appears when you're 30 40 and by then it's obviously too late so if you're a young person watching this video please use sunblock and continue watching to know how to prevent signs of aging and also helps with acne and wrinkles and stuff so what is retinol retinol is a vitamin a derivative in the 1960s uh, dermatologists would work in laboratories with an ingredient called all trans retinol and this proved to be highly unstable which is why they abandoned the research into that and they just stopped for a while about 30 years and then in the 1990s and the early 2000s they started playing around with um, another derivative of all trans retinol which is known as trans retinoic acid and this is what we know of as retinol today and it's, it's really effective they've managed to make it more stable and this is why when I say retinol, like even to my own mom, you know, people are a bit apprehensive because of the bad press it had gotten previously, but it is very safe to use today. We will be, um, I will be talking about how to use it safely and minimizing side effects later on in the video, so continue watching. Very young and we play in the sun, the solar radiation causes matrix degradation in our skin. So histologically, if you were to take age, premature age skin and look at it, the dermis and the epidermis would both be thinner and we would find quantitatively we would find fewer fibroblasts and keratinocytes. Fibroblasts are important because they make collagen in our skin and that's what makes it nice and plumpy and um, keratinocytes are important because they form a barrier function so they form really tight junctions in the deep layers of our skin and that protects us against like UV radiation and stuff. 
So um, because there's fewer of them, we're more exposed and to more damage. So it's like a domino effect kind of. And qualitatively, um, they found that aged skin had fragmented collagen fibers. So the collagen that was there wasn't as effective. And this is why in older skin, you tend to find chronic skin ulceration and poor wound healing. And how they um, attributed this to solar radiation and sun, sun damage was very interesting because then they looked at, so they looked at areas of the skin, such as your face, which is predominantly exposed to the sun. And then they looked at areas of the buttocks and that being less exposed to the sun did not have um, as pronounced signs of aging. So remember, use your sunblock and protect yourself from the sun. Don't go out unnecessarily. Be smart about that, people, ladies and gentlemen. So how retinol can help is because it stimulates pro-collagen and glycosaminoglycan synthesis. And glycosaminoglycans are known as the hyaluronic acid. I'm not sure if you've seen that in your skincare products. So that's actually what it is. And it increases the mature collagen band in the higher areas of the skin. Um, so macroscopically, what retinol does is it increases cell cell renewal, so cell turnover. So that's like an exfoliative property, and that's why it helps with acne scars and hyperpigmentation. And it minimizes the breakdown of collagen as well as promoting the synthesis of it. So that's why it um, reduces fine wrinkles. So I'm just going to be quoting a few studies, otherwise I'd be just chatting rubbish to you guys, right? And we have to practice evidence-based medicine. So how do we know that retinol works? Um, various numerous studies, like. Plenty of studies have been done. You guys can go check it out on Google Scholar. The links to the studies that I'm quoting will be in the description box below. But um, the most interesting one was done by Kathy Crack and Schumacher. Schumacher, like Michael Schumacher, the Ferrari F1 driver. So what they found was they, they took a study group and they followed them over 24 weeks of retinol usage at night. And these people, so dermatologists assess wrinkles through a grading system and at the beginning of the study the control group scored uh, average was minus 1.64 on this assessment grading system for wrinkles at the end of the 24 weeks the there was such marked improvements that the wrinkles were reduced to minus 0 0.08 so that was excellent results another study was done and they looked at the effect of retinol on cellulite very interesting um, this study was done by Gligman and Piagioni in 1999. I thought it was very interesting that it was done in 1999 and it's 2019. I wasn't even, you know, that aware for it. It's not in mainstream media or like if you go to the salon, it's not something that's really promoted. But what they did, what they found was they measured the reduction in cellulite through the ultrasound and the Doppler velocimetry. I'm probably saying that word wrong. <laughs> but that basically looks at the blood flow in the skin. And on the ultrasound, they found that the hypoechogenicity areas of the cellulite, so that's like the areas of really bad cellulite, decreased from 53% to 18%. So the depth of the cellulite. And they found that there was also a marked increase in blood flow to areas where there were cellulite. Just by using retinol, on cellulite for a period of, I think it was 40 weeks, so a period of 40 weeks, this is a longer period. And I'm just gonna add in some pictures here of befores and afters with retinol. So let's talk about how we can actually use retinol. It is available over the counter in lower concentrations, and I, I recommend this for, all, for younger people and everyone who's just starting out on using retinol. Um, try and start from the absolute lowest dose and then work your way up gradually because there's high amounts of side effects associated with it and these are skin peeling, redness, irritation, itching, um, like it burns almost and use very tiny amounts and uh, I know Demologica even has retinol and it comes with a free buffer cream which is just like a normal cream with no active ingredients just to sort of um, soothe your skin. It's also important if you are going to be using active ingredients for the first time, I would recommend personally you start off like just using retinol as an active ingredient at night. Or maybe start off with using it twice a week, three, three nights in a week. You only use it at night, by the way, because it increases your sun sensitivity. And I wouldn't recommend using acids or anything at first with a retinol uh, in your regime. Uh, even now, my skin is more used to acids and retinols. I still don't like exfoliating acid, I still don't use them both at the same time, or sometimes it will, like I mentioned in Dr. Dennis Gross's skin pads, because that's another video for another day, but it, it decreases the effectiveness of both if you use them and you layer it. So try not to do that. The main thing, the main point of the series is to be um, reducing the amount that you guys pay on skincare products that promise these amazing results, 
and you, at first you might not see the results taking me it's way too costly you could be getting the same results with something cheaper if you just look at the ingredient bottle like i'm not shaming any brands i'm just saying it's important for the consumer to be aware of what they're buying why you're buying it what's what it's going to do for your skin and what you're looking for so you can just be more aware of what you want and what you need and just for beautiful younger looking skin thank you guys for watching this video i hope you really enjoyed it please give it a like and a thumbs up well that's the same thing isn't it give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any other questions if you have especially about skincare if you want me to add any other product reviews or anything to this range i have got the Froyo espada blue light laser if you'd like me to talk about that i was thinking of doing a review on it i'm not sure just because i had bad things to say about it um but let me know if there's any other products you'd like me to comment on any questions you guys have and i'm keen to help see you guys in my next video.